Hello, I am Professor N. B. Hulle from G. H. Rai Suni Institute of Engineering and Technology. In this case, I will give one shortcut method to calculate the current, which is generally we will call it as direct inspection method. This method we need in case of the superposition theorem. Sometimes the reduction method becomes complicated whenever the number of sources are large. Uh, there is some chance of the star and delta conversions. In that particular case, the reduction method is very complicated. Now here, this method is very efficient when we want to use the current calculations in other method, just as a supervision theorem. Before that, we will try to understand this particular method. It is the extension of the mesh analysis or it is a direct inspection for the mesh analysis. Now here, in this case, we will assume three separate current for the three loops. Now here for the loop 1, I will assume its current as I1, for the second loop we will assume its current as I2 and for third loop we will assume its current as I3. And in a single step we are able to calculate the currents in this particular method and generally it is known as a direct inspection method. I will show how is the impedance matrix generally uh, for the impedances or for the circuits. Here, this is generally R11, this is R12, this is R13, here is R21, this is R22, this is R23, here is R31, R32 and finally it is R33. And generally these are the currents that is I1, I2 and I3 is equal to the constants that is C1, C2 and C3. This R11 is the resistance of the first loop. R12 is the resistance which is common for the first and second loop. This is first loop, this is second loop, the common resistance is 3. R13 is the resistance which is common for the first and third loop. This is first loop, and this is third loop, there is no common element. That's why its value should be 0 and so on. By using this matrix directly, we can prepare this particular matrix by looking at the figure. That's why this particular method is known as a direct inspection method. We are inspecting the circuit and we are preparing this matrix directly. Now here in this case, in this particular method, I will start from here. In this particular method, all the diagonal elements are positive. Here, these are the diagonal elements. That is R11, R22, R33. All these diagonal elements are the positive. Now first we will start with the calculation of the R11, resistance of the first loop. Now here is the first loop, its resistance is a 2 plus, uh, that is 3 which is 5. Here it is diagonal element, that's why it should, it should be positive. Then we will find out the second element which is R22, resistance of the second loop. That is 5 plus 5, 10 plus this 3 which is 13, this is 13. Then we will calculate the R33 that is resistance which belongs to the third loop only. Here this is the third loop. Its resistance is 10 plus 5 which is 50. Now here we have calculated all these diagonal elements which is 5, 13 and 50. Now we will target on the two values here, these two, which is R21 and R12. This resistance which is common for the first and second loop or second and first loop. This is first loop, this is second loop. The common element for these two loops is a 3 ohm resistance. And other than the diagonal element, all elements are positive. This is R12 is very same as R21 which is 3 and here we will write it as a minus 3. Then here we will target on the next element which is R31 or R13. The resistance which is common for the first and third loop. Here is the first loop and here is the third loop. There is no common resistance or element. That's why its value will be 0. This is 0 as well as this is also 0. Then here finally we will calculate these two elements. That is R23 or R32 which is resistance common for the second and third loop or third and second loop. This element which is 5, we will write it as 
minus 5 because only the diagonal elements are the positive remaining all elements are negative hardly it will take a minute if uh, we know its procedure then we have the three currents which is i1 i2 and i3 which we have marked already this is i1 i2 and i3 these are unknowns which is equal to the constants here we have the constant c1 c2 and c3 how to calculate c1 now look at in this loop we have to travel with the direction of the current direction of the current clockwise then we have to travel clockwise if the direction of the current is anti clockwise we have to travel in the anti clockwise if we are traveling with the direction of the current we are traveling from the negative to the positive which is a plus how much is the value 3 then here we are traveling downward for this battery that is again negative to the positive which is plus how much is the value 2 3 plus 2 which is 5 with c1 our constant one is the 5 then similarly for the loop number 2 we are traveling again with the direction of the current that is positive to negative which is minus 2 then again if we are traveling for the sources only positive to negative which is minus 5 this is constant will be minus 7 here c2 is minus 7 finally for the third element or third constant we are traveling in the third loop that is negative to positive which is plus 5 then again with the direction of the current negative to positive which is again plus 20 this is value will be 25 this constant c1 sorry c3 is 25 and this is the way to calculate uh, the currents now here we can solve these three equations simultaneously and uh, we are able to find out the value of the current i1 and i2 and i3 if you have the calculator direct, directly you can substitute these values in the calculator and we, we will get the values of the currents i1 i2 i3 here we are interested in the calculation of the current in 10 ohm resistance this value this this value this indirectly we are interested in i3 and we can calculate this value of the current which is i3 and this method is very useful in case of the superposition theorem whenever we have the multiple sources i will take uh, uh, such examples uh, maybe in the next video in this case again uh, we will try to understand the basics of again this particular method i will take the another example as far as this direct inspection method is concerned now here Calculate current in 10 ohm resistance for the network shown below. Now here again in this case I will use the method which is the direct inspection method. Now here I will assume the three currents here. The first current is I1 again. Second current is I2 again. And third current is the I3. I1, I2 and I3. Now here in this case if we are assuming the three currents for generally for this particular method we have to assume all the currents are clockwise or maybe all the currents as anti-clockwise and this method may not be suitable whenever there is a current source or whenever there is a dependent source now here again we need the similar matrix we need the similar matrix i will write here r11 this is r12 r13 for three loops if we have the two loops then only r11 r12 uh, R221 and R22, these four elements are sufficient uh, for the three loop. This will be the impedance matrix or resistance matrix in this case. R21, this is R22, this will be the R23, here it is R31, R32, and finally it is R33. And then we have the currents which are I1, I2, and I3, these are the three unknowns, is equal to the constants. And here in this case, the constants are this is c1 c2 and c3 and here we will uh, use the similar method or similar circuit for that those calculations now here in this case be careful of the basics now here we will use this format for the calculations of the currents that is by using direct inspection method here the unknowns are C that is I1, I2 and its third current I3. First we will find out the diagonal elements. 
and all the diagonal elements are positive remaining all elements are the negative only the diagonal elements are positive now we will focus initially on the calculation of r11 that is resistance which belongs to the first loop now look at here this is the first loop its resistance will be 3 plus 3 6 plus 2 that is 8 and it is the diagonal element that's why it will be positive then second we will calculate r22 that is resistance which belongs to the second loop this is the second loop that is 2 plus 2 that is 4 plus 2 6 6 plus 5 11 this here this is 11 again diagonal element then we will calculate the third element which is r33 resistance belongs to the third loop this is third loop its resistance will be 10 plus 2 that is 12 plus 3 that is 15 this is plus 15 then remaining all elements in this particular method are the negative we will calculate these two r12 and r21 resistance which is common for the first and second loop first and second loop 2 that's why its value will be the minus 2 and here is again minus 2 r12 is very same as r21 that's why it is minus 2 then we will find out the remaining two values that is R13 and R31 that is resistance which is common for the first and third loop. This is first loop, this is third loop, these two. Its common element is a 3 means its value will be minus 3. Here is minus 3 and at the end we will calculate remaining two values that is resistance which belongs to second and third loop or third and second loop this is second this is third its common element or common element is the two its value will become minus two here this is again minus two now we know the matrix now impedance matrix we have the unknowns i1 i2 i3 now here we will calculate the constants c1 c2 c3 as i discussed previously for the calculations of the constant always we have to travel with the direction of the current we have to travel with the direction of the current. If I am traveling with the direction of the current negative to positive for first constant, for first loop, C1 is equal to negative to positive plus 10. Then positive to negative which is minus 2. Its value will be 8. That is plus 8. Plus 8 is the constant one. What about the constant number 2, C2? For the loop 2, we will travel with the direction of the current clockwise again. Negative to positive plus. Plus 2, only one element. There is no other battery. That's why its constant will be plus 2. For third loop, again we will travel with the direction of the current. That is negative to positive, which is a plus C3, which is equal to plus 5. This is plus 5. Now here, in this case, we have... The three equations and three unknowns. Unknowns are I1, I2 and I3. By solving these equations simultaneously, we can calculate the values of the currents I1, I2, I3. But here, we are planning to calculate current in 10 ohm resistance, which is here. That is, again we are interested in the calculation of the current, which is I3. And we can find out the value of the I3 by using these simple tricks. And this method will be very efficient whenever we are using the direct inspection method. Again, in that particular case, no need to look at the directions of the currents, whether it is upward or downward. Directly, this method will give the sign of the current also. That's why I will prefer this particular method whenever the number of sources are more in a superposition theorem or if the network is complicated in case of the superposition theorem. That's all for this direct inspection method. Thank you.